Welcome back to another episode of 52 Weeks of Gaming. Years winding down, but we're winding up, so take it away. Okay, so this week the game is The Outer Worlds, which is a new game that came out uh, last Friday, so kind of waited to play it this week. And it's described as a single player, sci fi, out of the world sort of game. It's similar to Fallout, and the early people are saying it's essentially what Fallout needed to be because it's made by Obsidian, which means that I'm kind of excited for this game. So we're going to find out how far into it I can get and uh, how much I can enjoy it. The Outer Worlds is a game that is developed by Obsidian Entertainment, best known probably for Fallout New Vegas, and published by Private Division. It is considered an action role-playing game similar to Fallout in the first-person perspective, where you create your own character and wander around the Halcyon colony to go and meet different NPCs and figure out the story of what has happened since your ship has gone missing 70 years ago and you are now 70 years in the future without knowing really anything that has happened in the universe. There are plenty of different weapons to go and use and learn about, as well as different stats to build up, different companions to go and gain for your ship, different planets to go and explore, plenty of different skills and perks that you can possibly go and gain, as well as many different dialogue options that go and choose how you're going to go and talk to people in the different planets that you go and visit. The game itself is set in an alternate reality after 1901 where William McKinley is not assassinated and which allows large businesses to go and become mega corporations which are fighting for power across the stars and the Halcyon Colony is one of those many places that they go and fight. The game originally was uh, started development in 2016 and then kind of was known at 2018 as a little bit of a leak and then released uh, on October 25th for Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox, as well as been announced to come out on the Nintendo Switch in 2020. I'm going to send it over to Nick, though, for more details, because I know this is right up his alley, as most of these games seem to be. So take it away, Nick. Okay, so this week was The Outer Worlds, which is a game that's developed by Obsidian. And so you know it's going to be good, because Obsidian did the Fallout New Vegas, which is one of the best... Uh, Fallout games in the entire franchise. Still, really, the one that's not Bethesda, and that's why people wanted Fallout to kind of go back into Obsidian's hands. And I want to say, with this game, it kind of feels like Fallout in space, and that's not a bad thing. I love the Fallout series, and so the idea of Fallout in space is great. And uh, this is just something that I I knew a bit about because of obsidian and and microsoft talking about it but i did not expect to to really get into it as much as i did and, and fall in love with it like i did with the with fallout 3 and mass effect and older rpgs i want to say older not that old but older rpgs and the overall style of it is something that that i just loved and and i can't think of enough about it that it's something that I've always liked in games. I love sci-fi. I love the fantasy aspect. I love the the Fallout 3 mechanics of like the idea that every conversation that you have and every decision that you make is kind of important and like Walking Dead did that for their game series by um, Telltale and so there's all these sorts of games that are out there that that follow this sort of like all your decisions matter and it's just super interesting in this universe that is has to go and be built up based on like one game and things you find on data pads and all these sorts of ideas and it it fits into the idea that like like fallout has for the beginning of its games where it's just like you don't know anything about the universe that's in or you might know things about the universe technically in the later fall games but your character doesn't know anything really about where they are at. And like this one starts with your character waking up 70 years later than they were supposed to be in an area. And so it's the whole idea of your character just basically was in cryo to go on this trip to the Halcyon uh, colony and ship gets diverted. 
And so you're lost for 70 years until this guy named Phineas Wells goes and wakes you up and brings you out of cryo and kind of is like, hey, I'm going to need your help to wake, to wake up the rest of the colonists on your ship Hope. And it's just this crazy kind of universe that's built with, with these characters in it that you really feel for and you really go and enjoy talking to. And they don't they don't make the companions seem too ridiculous and they kind of fit into these like click roles i want to go and say like parvati's the like awkward like first person that you go and meet for your companions and then like you can go and um meet like vicar max after that and he's kind of like the upstanding long law-abiding like religious man and you have and then you have like felix and sam and and Nioka and ellie <clears throat> so you get this whole band together but it's it's the possibilities that you have the conversations that you overhear the overall feel of the game and how it does things like similar to the vat system in fallout you have this what they call the ttd it's um Basically, you slow down time and can move around in that aspect and kind of line up and it shows you stats for for the enemy. You can choose to like blind or, or cripple or basically weaken people depending on where you shoot them. And it just makes an overall really interesting sci-fi game. Sure, there are parts of it that are a bit ridiculous, I think, and just things that... After I finished it, I went on the subreddit to go and kind of read other people's thoughts on it because I already had my own based on it. And besides besides the crash that happens in the game, that's kind of a well-known thing where you're going to fight this... What, spoiler alert. Uh, you're going to fight uh, Chairman Rockwell. And pretty much if you enter his room, the game just crashes. And so people were figuring out, like, oh, if you go around to the other side and go in this room and all these sorts of things. But it's there's some things like that, like the the food system is kind of important on, like, the supernova level difficulty because it's, like, a, like the extreme hard. All companions die if they go and die in a battle sort of thing. So you got to kind of build them up or go in solo. But there's... There's no point to the food otherwise in the game. I mean, I collected so many things that I don't, I didn't even use throughout the game, and the game kind of builds up to this point that at the end you're just like, okay, there has to go and be more to it. There has to be something else to this game because there's planets that are left unlocked. You have this weird ability to just go and like send companions back to the ship and. I don't know if that would tie into it, but there's there's things part of the game that like it's like it alludes to more. I'm not gonna spoil the big reveal at the end, but there's but what you your character finds out at the end is something that would almost shape DLC. And sure, it follows the same. Uh, I'm gonna keep saying it. Fallout formula at the end of the game, where it kind of walks you through like the decisions that you made and and how you you go about them and how the world goes about them and i think the one uh decision that i made which was kind of spurred the moment that was shown in an ending that i didn't expect is that at this one point in the game you do these um contracts for this company called sublight and at the end you go back and they're just like cool i go and you and i based on my choices they're just like we're not doing contracts with you anymore so i always want to go and see like okay what happens what what happens if I do this? So I go, so I go and save the game, and I decide to just you know to kill the the boss of of Sublight, the the leader of it. And I'm like, okay, and there seems to be no repercussions. The the groundbreaker, the ship that I'm on, doesn't really seem to care. And so I just go about my business, and then at the end of the game, in the ending, they're just like, without Hagen in charge, and I'm like, whoa, okay, they plan for people to go and do that. And I guess in a game where you can pretty much kill absolutely everyone, um, yeah, you could you could go and you're going to need endings for that. 
but overall it's just such a nice game and such a beautiful game and i see it being something that's probably in contention for game of the year this year just because of of how great it is and all the decisions that you have to make and how invested people get with it and it's something that I think you can tell that it's good in my opinion because I want to do more playthroughs of it because of the different modes and kind of do things like either I could try to go super pacifist or try to go like an all kill route or you can make your character dumb and apparently that's the world that speed run technique is to go and make your character just an idiot um so there's tons of things to go and do and yeah it's a great game I absolutely love it you clearly had a lot to go and say about this game, so I'm sure I know the answer to this, but who should go and keep playing this? I think everyone should play it. I think anyone who liked Obsidian's games in the past, especially like Fall New Vegas, will really go and love this. I think anyone, as I've told people, I consider it almost like Fallout and Mass Effect had a baby, like Fallout in space, because you got these quirky characters, but you got this really really dark sense of, of morality that happens in it and these choices that you have to go and make that i think anyone would really go and enjoy that at least the storytelling aspect of this and you can do that that is a setting for difficulty it's just story it's, the combat doesn't isn't as important it's more about the the actual novel that's being told do you think you're gonna keep playing it i know you alluded to it we just you know need a definitive answer as I said, I definitely think I'm going to go and play it again. I think it's something that, because of the different difficulties, and I am curious about Supernova difficulty, and it's something that I typically don't try, but I really like the story, and I'm curious if I can go and do it as difficult as it is. So yeah, I think it's something that I'm going to go and try, and I'm going to keep playing and try to go and, and, and see what else the game has to offer. So 